Welcome guys, we'll be looking at patient control analgesia. This uh, one is specific to what we call as a sedation score. Um, the sedation score is something that's done in uh, people who are using this uh, patient control analgesia. It's basically a way to look at how they're responding to the patient control analgesia and if there are any side effects related to the medication that have been given. And if there are, how do you treat them? So that's what the sedation score is. So the sedation score looks, like, uh, looks at the pain, uh, sedation, and the functional activity score, okay? So the pain basically refers to uh, if the patient has no pain, so uh, that's a zero score, or 10 out of 10 pain, that's the worst pain imaginable. Usually we ask the patients, is the pain bearable, or there is no pain, or the pain is so intense that it's like stabbing a knife by someone, that's basically an indicator of 10 out of 10 pain. Now based upon this, sedation score is also evaluated. So sedation score can be zero, one, two, and three. And zero is when the patient is wide awake, okay? Uh, you don't have to arouse the patient, patient is just awake. And that's ideally what you want in a patient. So that basically means you're giving a proper dosage of the drug and it's highly unlikely that uh, there are any side effects related to the analgesia, the pain relief, and the medications we are giving. Um, the second one is patient is not wide awake but he's easy to arouse okay so if you call the patient or if you gently move the patient the patient is easy to arouse okay so that's a sedation score of one the next thing is easy to arouse but cannot awake okay so this is the next step in the ladder so the patient um, you cannot arouse the, you can arouse the patient but he cannot stay awake and goes back to sleep this is not very uncommon now, number four, the most severe one of this is basically when the patient is difficult to arouse and the patient has severe respiratory depression. Okay, now we also have the functional activity score, which, which is divided as A, B, and C. A is there's no limitation of relevant activity due to pain, B is there's mild limitation, and C is the patient is unable to complete activity due to the pain. So that's a functional activity score. But we're here to look at how to manage the side effects, okay? So, now this is primarily based upon the sedation score. So if the sedation score is two, or if the sedation score is three, then you need to do something about it, okay? So that's what we want to look at. So if the sedation score is two, then we should reduce the size, the size of the bolus by half and sees any background infusion okay so we reduce the size of the bolus and reduce and stop any background infusions we should notify the pain team so APS is the acute pain service so notify the pain team and we should revert to hourly hourly sedation scores until the sedation score is less than two for at least two hours. So these are the important things to remember. So the sedation score is to reduce the size of the bolus by half, seize any background infusion, notify the pain team, return to early sedation score until it becomes less than two for at least two hours. Okay, now what if the sedation score is three? Now, irrespective of the respiratory rate or sedation score two and respiratory rate less than seven, we should initiate a MER call. So MER is basically a medical emergency response. Okay, that's what we should initiate in these patients. And we should also give 100 micrograms of naloxone. Okay, we know that naloxone is um, antidote to opioid analgesia. So we should give naloxone. It should be repeated two minutes per year and up to a total dose of 400. So you start with 100 and you go up to 400, uh, 400 mic um, micrograms as required, okay? So 100 to 400. Um, we should seize any PCA that's going on, call the APS, obviously, revert to our sedation, which is a common that we do, and we should continue this till the sedation score becomes less than two for at least two hours, okay? Less than two for two hours. 
Now, if they also have nausea and vomiting, we should give any antihistaminic, okay? Uh, now, if this is ineffective, if the antihistamines are ineffective, after 50 minutes, we can give droperidol 500, 500 microgram. So these, what we're discussing, are basically common side effects of opioids in a patient control analgesia system and how to deal with them. Now, if the patient is not responding to antiemetics, then we should contact the APS team. We can, the patient can also have itching, so respiratory depression, nausea and vomiting, and itching. Okay, so these are the three common side effects. Again, okay, managing them depends upon uh, the following factors, how severe the things are. Now, if they have itching or the patient if and if the itching is severe, um, then we should contact the APS team. Okay, but the most important thing here is the sedation score. We should know all know what sedation score is and how to deal with the sedation score. So that's the crux of uh, um, this short video to know what the sedation score is and how do we deal with it.